to the vows that you will make today. With your marriage today, you begin a brand new life together with larger responsibilities now. Carl, guard well this your bride who now commits herself into your keeping. And strive so to live in the Lord that no word or deed of yours shall cloud her brow with grief or dim her eyes with tears. Jennifer, it will be your part to strive to retain by your virtues the heart you have won by your graces. And to you both, I would say today, let your, not your voices lose the tender tones of affection, nor your eyes lose the excitement that you now look at each other with and have shown in the early days of your relationship. And above all else, let God be above all at all times. Before the vows today, Carl and Jennifer have chosen to express some thoughts toward each other. So I want to give them that opportunity. Carl, since I fell in love with you, I've learned that love is an unconditional commitment to an imperfect person. I don't expect you to be perfect. I'm not perfect. But love is just more than a strong feeling. It's a decision, it's a judgment, and it's a promise. I love my eyes when you look into them. I love my name when you say it. I love my heart when you touch it. And I love my life because you're in it. So, when you say you love me, I always say I love you more. And when I say I love you more, I don't mean that I love you more than you love me. I mean, I love you more than the bad days ahead of us. I love you more than any fight you ought to have. I love you more than the distance between us when we're apart. And I love you more than any obstacle that could ever try to come between us. I love you most. So. I guess what I'm trying to say is loving you comes deep within a place in my heart where before there was nothing because I have you. I have you. I can hear it on them what to say. The only thing I can say is the first day I met you, just when I knew that you was going to be a part of my life, not knowing that it would come true. I just, I 
wish always came true. Loving you, I will always love you. I will always be faithful to you. You can always trust me and believe me. I will never run to you. I love Bow back to me then. I, Carl, take you gently to be my wedded wife, to have and to hold from this day forward, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish till death do us part, according to God's holy ordinance. And there too, I pledge to you my love. Jennifer, would you repeat these vows? I, Jennifer, take you, Carl, to be my wedded husband, to have and to hold from this day forward, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish. Till death, death do us part. According to God's holy ordinance. According to God's holy ordinance. And, there too, and there too, I pledge you. I pledge you. I love you. Carl. Jennifer, would you place the ring in Carl's hand and repeat after me? Carl. Carl. With this ring. With this ring. I pledge to you my love. I pledge to you my love. My faith. And my trust. And my trust. Carl, if you would take the ring and place it on Jennifer's finger. Carl, we have to meet Jennifer. Jennifer. With this ring. With this ring. I pledge to you. I pledge to you. My love. My, love. my faith. My faith. And my trust. My trust. Carl and Jennifer have chosen today to do something unique. That maybe you've never seen before. It's called a salt covenant. And so they're going to go to the table. This was a part of Old Testament culture. In Old Testament times, traditionally, salt was a symbol of a bond made between two people, an alliance between close friends. Men would wear a pouch of salt tied to their belt, and when they made covenants, they would exchange a pinch of salt putting their grains of salt into each other's pouches and vice versa. If a man would try to break his covenant, the other would say, yes, you can break it if you can retrieve your grains and your grains only from the pouch of salt. Obviously, this was impossible. Today, Carmel and Jennifer have decided to use a salt covenant as a visual reminder of their commitment to each other and to God. The two vials of salt represent two unique lives to this point, each with different traits, personalities, qualities, and experiences. And as Carl and Jennifer each pour their individual grains of salt into the unity vial, they are signifying today their unified, united life as they enter an eternal covenant with each other and with God. No sooner can this commitment be broken than each individual grain of salt must be placed back into its original God, we are grateful today for your love for us. We're grateful for Jennifer and Carl today and what you've done in their lives, Lord. God, we've seen them grow. And Lord, today as they have come together to be united in marriage, we ask, Lord, that you would bless this union. God, in the days ahead, as there will be valleys and mountaintops, sunny days, rainy days, we ask, God, that their love would grow each day and become stronger, and that, Lord, with you, a, a threefold cord will not be broken. So, Lord, we ask that in the days ahead that you will guard them, place a hedge of protection around about them, an umbrella of your blessing over their head, Lord, and that your provision would be very evident in their life. God, you would be the God of provision, that, Lord, when they have a need, they would look to you, and once comes their strength and their help. So God, we just thank you today for their lives. We thank you for this ceremony today. 
And we thank you for what they are going to accomplish together for you in the future. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now that you, Carl and Jennifer, have shared your vows, pledged your faith to each other by the giving and receiving of a ring before God and these witnesses, I now pronounce you man and wife. What God has joined together, let no one divide. Carl, you may kiss your bride. Mr. and Mrs. Carl Custer. <laughs> 